Good morning. I actually think it might be 12 a.m., but good morning. I wanted to do a quick, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be quick. It might actually be a long video. I wanted to do a knit and chat. I have class in two hours, but this idea for this video has been in my mind or like on my mind for the whole week. I'm still in my pajamas, but I did wash my face and do my skincare to just look a little bit more presentable. Anyway, I have wanted to start doing knit and chat since I feel like my previous podcast that I make, a lot of people kind of liked that format. And so I decided that I would kind of do knitting podcasts, but not necessarily on the topic of knitting, but more like just a knit and chat, basically. You know what a knit and chat is, okay? Anyway, today I wanted to talk about sustainability. Now, I don't know much about sustainability on a scientific level. I haven't scripted anything for this video. I have not prepared much, but I've just been thinking to myself a lot this week about my own consumerism and how I would kind of like to change the ways that I consume in certain ways. And not all of them have to do with knitting, but they are pretty simple things that I've just been thinking to myself Myself that I can change. So some things are gonna be about things that I want to change myself, some things are like things that I want to change in the future, just some of my thoughts on certain things. It might be a bit chaotic because I don't have anything scripted, but I'm just gonna, you know, speak my mind on things, okay? Let me first talk to you about the project that I'm making. I am making a free-handed cowl neck sweater. It was supposed to be more of like a really wide cowl neck, but not off the shoulder, but I made the neckline a little bit too narrow for that. So it's just like a really, really wide turtleneck. First I cast it off normally and it was way too tight. And now I did an elastic cast off, which kind of made it seem more relaxed and I did the cowl neck in broken rib. I've never done broken rib before and I'm absolutely in love with it now. Started on the left sleeve and I already finished the bottom in two by two rib before I knew what I was gonna do with the cowl. So I think I'm gonna change this to just a regular one by one rib and do the same for the sleeves. I don't yet know what kind of ribbing or how long I want the ribbing to be on the bottom of the sleeves, but I think I'm gonna make them relatively short because I want all the focus to be on the cowl neck. I am using Drops Air in the color pistachio ice and we're just gonna we're just gonna get started so the first topic it's mainly it's the thing that is most pressing on my mind right now i was shopping i was just walking across like the big main street in antwerp and i saw that the body shop was closed and the body shop apparently is broke. They no longer sell stuff in England, in Belgium, I think Germany, they're kind of still going. I was really sad about that because I do like some of their scents and because they are a brand that kind of strive to be more eco-friendly, I don't know in how far they actually are eco-friendly, but they did have like refillable shampoo and stuff and some of my friends have been using them for a long time and they really love it. So we were kind of talking about that stuff. And that kind of got me thinking about that. I want to start trying to use more shampoo bars and shampoo or like conditioner bars. I have never used those before. And so that kind of got me thinking about plastic in like daily rituals and how much plastic I have in my home. And I realized that most of it basically comes from my skin and hair care routine. And so I, in general, want to minimize my consumption because the most things that I buy are for my hair or for my skin. Because in 2020, I started getting really into skincare. It all started with that red AHA, BHA mask by The Ordinary, but I never really had acne or really particular skin concerns. And so I just started getting into skincare and buying a bunch of serums thinking that I needed them or thinking that I would look absolutely glowy and have Korean glass skin, which obviously never happened. My skin still looked good, but there wasn't like an improvement that that I could say was because of one certain product. And so I've kind of decided now because I looked at my vanity and I was like, I have so much stuff on here that I do use, but I don't actually need. There is, There are very little products that I buy and repurchase them. I do like buying different cleansers and different creams and stuff, but I never end up like finding a product that I love so much that I want to repurchase it. And Hi, quick note here for me in my bed. What I also think is a problem is that when you buy a bunch of products and you start putting them all together in a routine, of course, for a lot of people, the fact that all of the products are put together or combined into a routine might be the thing that clears up your skin or makes your hair more luscious. But I'm just the type of person that believes it's just 
one product doing it for you. And for me personally, when I'm using a bunch of products on my hair or on my skin, like for example, now I made up a whole hair care routine because I'm talking about this later, but I basically got more invested in hair care than skincare right now, or just because I realized that I don't have that many skin concerns. So it doesn't make sense for me to spend my money on that. But I did notice like some new growth in my hair, but because now I have quite a lot of steps in my hair care routine, I don't know what that one thing is that is doing it. And of course it might be a combination of all of them, but I am the type of person that likes to think that is this one thing. So let's say it is the case that it's just this one thing. For example, I don't know, a vitamin C serum might be the thing that is clearing up your skin. You're gonna be kind of scared to quit using all of the other products because what if it wasn't the vitamin C? Then you're gonna have to start all over. You know what I mean? I don't know. So that's kind of the thing. Like if there could be just, if it's just one product that is good for your hair or your skin and it's doing the thing that you want it to do, you're never gonna know or you're gonna have to like try it out product by product and not use any other ones. And that might be like really hard. But you know, for a person like me who tries to minimize their skincare routine, it might be actually really helpful to just know what that one product is that is doing it for you, you know, without you having to spend, continue having to spend money on all of those other things. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to say. I don't know if that makes sense. I always own one cleanser at a time and I always own one moisturizer at a time. So that is good. I don't own multiples of one. And now I own two different cleansers because I was really impulsive and I bought one of them because of TikTok and the other one just because I needed a cleanser. And so I bought that one off of TikTok or not off of TikTok, but through TikTok because I am really, I'm an impulse buyer and I am easily influenced. And so now I have three cleansers and I'm gonna keep the one that I have at home until it's finished. I mean, I never throw out products unless they are finished. So that is one thing, but just in general, I want to go back to just having one cleanser after these are through. So that's one thing. But like the main thing that I like to experiment with are serums and toners because those are the most fun. Mostly with my skincare, I only buy new stuff when it's finished. And I just bought the Inculist Polyglutamic Acid, which is a hydrating serum and the vitamin C serum. And I didn't see any results from them. And when I received the package, they their bottles are of really, really, really thick plastic. And I don't like that. And you can't open the jars or see how much is still left in them. So I kept them for as long as I could because even though I felt like they were empty, I didn't want to throw them out because I was scared that there was still more in there. And so even if they are a good brand, I don't think I want to repurchase those serums from them again, just because the packaging is so impractical i feel like because it has a pump you can't open it up and with pumps you often have a lot of leftover product that you can't reach because you can't open up the bottle and it was really 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 thick plastic and so when i throw it out that's not compostable or recyclable in any way and so i guess they're good products but just because of that packaging i just feel like you could make the plastic so much thinner or have it be glass like the ordinary does but i do like the ordinary because all of their serums come in glass bottles and although the top is still made from plastic which not using plastic is kind of inevitable but the main component of like their little serum bottles are glass and i do like that better and they are the inculus and the ordinary they've always been seen as kind of similar things but i noticed that a lot of people are now moving to the inculus because of the israel palestina debate but I mean, I like using both, but I just like the glass component of the Ordinary more. In case that I ever do buy a serum, I think I'm gonna keep it for the Ordinary, but like for cleansers or stuff, for a product where the plastic is thinner, I might go for the Inky List. Those are just like the main two brands that I'm describing right now because those are the ones that fit within my price range. We do have a local, like the Belgian version of Sephora, which is called the Easy Body XL, where they do sell one brand. I forgot their name, but I'll put it up here. And I bought a cleanser from them because that is a local Belgian brand. So um, I do kind of want to look into more local businesses too, if we are looking at the whole Israel-Palestina debate. Um, if that's really something you want to consider, I would consider just going and buying local stuff. Um, I'm also not really educated too much on the political side of things of like how brands work with that whole conflict, but I'm getting way too much into that. I was here to talk about the sustainability. So just on the plastic slash glass debate, I will be sticking to the ordinary.
on that note, I drifted really far away from what I was saying, but I was saying that I had two serums from the Inky List and I didn't really notice any difference in my skin appearance or in how my skin looked or whatever or felt. So I decided when they were totally finished that I would not repurchase them because I didn't notice a difference and because they, it has to come all the way from the UK and because it has really, really thick plastic. So now I decided Instead of using vitamin C, which I've been using for a while, I used vitamin C most of the time in combination with one other thing like niacinamide or hyaluronic acid or whatever, but I kind of decided to replace my serums with retinol. And I'm only 20 and I know that they recommend using retinol starting at 25 because that is the age when you start losing collagen in your face and your skin gets a little more saggy. And I'm only 20, but I did buy it from The Ordinary, and it's the 0.5 retinol in squalane, I think. I use that only once a week. And the reason why I like the retinol is because you only have to use it like once a week, which means that your bottle doesn't run out as fast as a product that you apply twice a day, every day. And I feel like retinol is a good product for overall in your skincare for fine lines, pigmentation, post acne scars, just like basically everything can be solved with retinol in my eyes. And I have had different people say that. I only use it once a week, so it doesn't run out as much. So I don't have to buy it time and time again. So that is better for my wallet and for the environment because you don't have to consume or like buy a new bottle every three weeks, which is basically the case with those little bottles. So those are some of the things that I'm trying to do with my skincare that I'm currently using. And then skincare in general, I decided that I won't buy anything except if I need it or if I run out of a product and I want to repurchase it. Because I have a tendency to walk into like a pharmacist or a beauty store after I've had like a rough day or I just feel like I need to fill a void, which is basically a shopping addiction, I guess, or retail therapy or whatever you want to call it. And then I buy something that looks fun and then I don't end up using it. I realized how did I never notice how much stuff I have and how much of it I don't use. But I also don't want to throw out stuff that I don't end up using. So either I'm going to look for a purpose for them, like figure out how I can use them or I'm going to give them away. So I should probably just go through my skincare and my hair care and have a look at what I don't use and instead of throwing it out like maybe ask my friends like hey could you use a hair mask or could you use this like I bought it but I don't need it. We all know that marketing is made to have women buy everything that they don't need and spend their money on it and think that they are ugly so that is also why I'm not wearing mascara in this video. I decided that I would try to go a week without wearing mascara except if I like go out but just going to class with no mascara is literally one of my biggest insecurities like my tiny my tiny whimpers whimpers <laughs> that's the dutch word my tiny lashes my eyelashes are one of my biggest insecurities because i think i look very ugly and not feminine without mascara i'm sorry i am all over the place but in general skincare don't buy stuff except if you really need it or if you've thought about it and for like a week and you think okay i do need it only buy skincare when you run out of stuff and you want to rebuy it. Don't throw out stuff that you haven't used. Give it to other people. Try and find a product that doesn't use a lot of plastic, or that's a personal thing. I don't want to have a lot of plastic in my routine. Use, for me, use as little products as possible because you don't really have particular skin concerns. Okay, next, hair care. I... My obsession has kind of shifted from skincare to hair care because I have been experiencing some hair loss this semester and I don't think it is particularly because of stress or whatever. I don't know what it's from, but I have just been taking better care of my hair for multiple reasons. First of all, because it was kind of falling out. Second of all, because I have been bleaching my hair for the past two or three years and I wanted to grow my hair out in my natural color again for the first time since I was like 15. And so I wanted to return to my natural hair color again. My ends are already a lot lighter because my hairdresser dyed it, but it didn't really, because I have low porosity hair, the dye didn't really absorb properly. So I use a dark brown hair mask right now to kind of have my ends be the same color as my roots and just I wanted to experiment and see if I can create a notable difference in my 
hair if I started taking better care of it. I must say I'm more a fan of myself as a blonde, but just for the sake of the health of my hair, I'm going back to this color and I'm keeping it this way. I have a couple of steps in my hair care routine. The most important thing that I try to do is oil my hair before I shower because that is something that I've actually noticed a difference with. I feel like my hair is stronger and softer and it doesn't get greasy as quickly, weirdly enough. I used to use the Mila rosemary oil like everybody does, but my hair was too thin or it's made for Afro hair. So already not a good start for me, but the rosemary was way too strong for my hair and my hair would actually fall out with like clumps if I went through it with the oil in my hair. And so I decided that I would make my own hair oil and a local store called Holland and Barrett, they sell natural products or very eco-friendly products. And so there was a sale going on that if you bought one bottle of natural oil, you could get two for free. So I did that. And now I have a bunch of almond oil, jojoba oil and argan oil. And I repurposed the little Mila oil bottles that I did use and they're glass. And I mixed the oils in there and I gave one to my mom and one is for me. And it lasts you a pretty long time. And instead of buying a bunch of hair masks or hair oils, that are all packaged in plastic and they are and they contain a bunch of stuff that your hair doesn't need i would say try and make your own hair oil like it's really nice i use one dropper for my whole scalp which is actually enough you don't need more than that it can actually clog your follicles and your hair can actually fall out more from that i recommend leaving it in for me two hours is perfect i usually don't have more time than two hours to leave it in my hair so that's what i do and i feel like it's pretty sustainable although the oil before it's mixed it comes in plastic bottles but um it will last me so long the stash that i have another thing that i want to do when i finish my current shampoo and conditioner is switch to shampoo bars and conditioner bars i have used a shampoo bar once in the past and i just don't like how it makes your hair feel squeaky clean and it's also because it doesn't foam it doesn't feel like a very nice experience or it feels like your hair is not getting very clean but i feel like there is no reason not to use them they can be a little bit more expensive but we have a physical store coming up of a belgian brand called wonder and they specialize in shampoo and conditioner bars and so i feel like i want to try it out once the store gets here i think their bars are eight euros which is okay because currently i use kerastase shampoo which was 18 euros for a bottle and they have relatively small bottles but I do really like the Kerasta shampoo and it takes me a really long time to finish it. But I just feel like that's something I want to try. Shampoo and conditioner is just, now that we have shampoo bars, it's a very, very simple replacement for all of the plastic. So not much to say about it there, but that's something I really want to commit to is using shampoo bars and conditioner bars. It lasts you a pretty long time. And I only wash my hair about two times a week, which sounds gross to some people, but my hair just doesn't get greasy that fast anymore. So that's what I do. It's also better for my hair breakage if I don't wash it as much. I think that's all for hair care. My hair care is pretty okay, but I, again, I have some styling products like volume powder, uh, styling cream, um, dry shampoo, a bunch of stuff that I don't really use. So I might just like go around and ask my friends if they want it, because if I'm gonna keep it around my house, I'm not gonna use it and it's just gonna clutter up my whole space. I'm not knitting anymore because I have to count. Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I should have decreased a long time ago. Okay, then if we wanna talk about makeup, I like using makeup, I use it every day, but I use really simplistic makeup. I also don't spend a lot of money on makeup. Um, and I wouldn't say I'm gonna change my consuming makeup wise a lot. I The only thing I should stop buying is lip glosses because I do buy a lot of lip products for like no particular reason. And even though it's really cheap, it's still a lot of plastic that is just laying around my house and is in my purse and whatever that doesn't have to be there. So again, I'm gonna use all of those products until they're finished, which is gonna take me a long time because I have a lot of them, but then I'm only gonna repurchase the ones that I like because I always end up wearing the same shade because I bought the other ones and never use them. Just, just the never ending story, right? But I just, if you have any like good plastic free or sustainable makeup brands that you know of, please let me know because that would be nice. But I 
take a pretty long time with all of my makeup because I don't wear a full face of makeup every day. So it's kind of sustainable in itself that I just don't use that much makeup because that's the thing with you can buy fast fashion clothing, but wear it for 30 years. That is more sustainable than throwing out your entire fast fashion closet in order to buy thrifted clothes because that's just another closet in the landfill. I wasn't thinking about getting into clothing, but I think I could get into it pretty quickly, like right now. I thrift a lot of my clothing and I feel like that is a pretty self-explanatory option to be a little more sustainable, but I never go shopping unless I need something which is pretty contradictory because I am a knitter um, and I knit most of my clothing. For example, I never buy sweaters because I knit all of them. Summer tops, I have had the same summer tops for over five years um, because I have a pretty simplistic style of dress. I have a bunch of these camisoles from uh, America Today in blue, in gray, in white. And I've been wearing them for over five years because although it is fast fashion, I do like their quality and I still like them a lot. Like I don't feel like my aesthetic changes that much because my clothing is pretty simplistic and because I just, I just don't walk into fast fashion stores. I am up to date with what is fashionable, although you might not always see that in my dress, like through social media, I look at catwalks and I look at different brands, but I don't walk into fast fashion stores and buy the next mesh top that is in. I don't, micro trends, I don't do that. I just don't. Mainly because most of the micro trends don't fall into the category of what I find nice looking. Um, and I guess that's kind of the case with most people who are into crafting. I feel like when you do craft and when you know how much time it takes for you to create one single sweater or if you sew one single piece of trousers, pair of trousers, you know better than to spend $400 in an H&M. You know that it's much better to have like a capsule closet with just these certain pieces that might be more expensive, but that you know you can wear for the rest of your life without them tearing or lip. Hey guys, um, I'm not saying that I don't own any fast fashion clothing, I do. I have a really big closet full of stuff, but I just tried to take into account right now how much clothing I already own. And if I don't want to wear any of it anymore, instead of throwing it out, I tried to sell it on Vinted, which is like a reselling app in Belgium. And also when I do buy something from a fast fashion store, I just try to ask myself the question, do I just like this now or do I like this for 20 years literally disintegrating and if they are there's nothing wrong with being basic with being basic you know that every single piece goes with every single pair of trousers and whatnot and even then if your trousers don't match your shirt who cares do it even though i like thrifting because thrifting is sustainable but if you go into a thrift store and buy five thousand pieces of clothing that you don't need that is not sustainable the most sustainable thing you can do is wear the clothes that you have as much as you possibly can. And preferably, you also mend the clothing that you have. Mending is something I want to get into. I don't have a lot of clothes that need repairing, but I have through my grandma this little mending tool. And I want to start doing mending, not necessarily visible mending because I'm not a great fan of that, but there is there are so many ways that you can mend the clothing that you have. And I feel like it's such a loss that we no longer teach mending or knitting or crafting in school. And not just for girls, definitely not. But I feel like if you teach a child how much time it takes you to weave or sew or knit or crochet a clothing piece, that people would be so much more aware of what they buy. Or maybe they would start making it themselves. We all know that maybe knitting a piece of clothing is a lot more sustainable or also just more ethical because you're not paying for child labor or just very horrible, horrible working circumstances. But you're also gonna wear that piece a lot longer because you created it. You chose the yarn, you chose the fabric, you took your time to make it, you made sure that you had the right size, that you love it, that you love every single thing about it. Nobody knits something or sews something because they, yeah, I kind of like it because you're going to spend money on yarn. You're going to spend hours, weeks, months on a piece of clothing. While if you walk into an H&M and you see something that you kind of like, but you're not really sure, but it only costs 10 bucks, you're more likely to buy that. So that's why I just don't walk into stores because I know I am an impulse buyer. So I don't walk into stores where I know that I will buy something 
because I sort of like it just because I want to buy something. And I am not saying that you cannot buy fast fashion. I don't have the budget to buy handmade clothes from like, I don't know, the south of Spain somewhere that is sewn by five Spanish women and then the pants cost 500 bucks, even though they are really sustainable. I don't have that budget, but I do wear my jeans that I buy in the monkey or in the Zara until they're literally falling off of my legs or until I don't fit in them anymore. That is also sustainable. It's okay if you can't afford these fancy ass sustainable brands. If you just don't over consume or if you just don't throw out every single thing as soon as it, if it's out of style, it's like the same thing with people buying those Stanleys. A water bottle is meant to be used for your entire life. There is no point in buying 15 different Stanleys because they are meant to use one for the rest of your life. I have been using the same thing to put my sandwiches in for school my entire life. My mom uses plastic uh, ice containers, like where ice cream used to be in, to store stuff, cookies and stuff. You don't need to buy a Stanley cup to replace your old bottle or whatever because it's fashionable and you kind of defeat the whole purpose of it being reusable if you buy 15 types of them or if you replace your perfectly normal cutlery with bamboo cutlery because bamboo cutlery is better for the environment it's not better for the environment if you are throwing out a whole perfect set of cutlery for a new one maybe yeah maybe i would buy only wood cutlery if that is a better option than metal but i'm not gonna do that if i already have perfect cutlery I feel like because you guys I'm knitting and you guys are part of the crafting community you already know most of this but I still feel like I don't know I just wanted to talk about it on a personal level and on a bigger level like personally for me my main focus is right now just not spending money on things that I don't need um, avoiding plastic as much as I can for things like shampoo using the stuff that I already own like um, I'll just take plastic containers from home that my mom doesn't use as much instead of buying all of my own stuff. But then the stuff, so basically not buying stuff that we already own, even if it's not really pretty. My cutlery is very mis mismatched, but at least it's cutlery. Your cutlery most of the time is in a drawer. It's not on display, so it doesn't have to be pretty. But that's my opinion, you know? But with certain things like shampoo or skincare or uh, cleaning products, for example, those are things that I didn't take from home. Those are my things. And because I don't already have them, I can start out by using or buying a sustainable option. I didn't have cleaning products when I moved in. So I bought from um, this brand, I bought a glass spray bottle and you buy these tablets and then you fill the bottle with water and you add the tablet in there and you shake and then you have an all-purpose cleaner and they have it for your kitchen they have it for windows they have these little tablets and so you never have to replace the bottle and buying those tablets is often cheaper than buying a plastic bottle in a supermarket because people often think that sustainable options are more expensive but it doesn't have to be you only buy the glass bottle once i think the glass bottle was under 10 bucks and then you buy the tablet which was maybe three bucks that's as much as a window cleaner or whatever, and it works perfectly fine. I don't have a really big space I need to clean. This is perfect for me. Or these brands weren't as well known or whatever. But because I do know those, I started out by buying those. I don't already have a really big stash that I want to replace, but something more sustainable. I have one bottle of all-purpose cleaner that I use, and it's great. I feel like I sound really preachy. I sound really angry, but that's not what I mean. I just, it's just my new, my new interest. <laughs> like I get it if I have a kid I want my kid to look aesthetically pleasing too but my baby is only going to wear those pieces of clothing for like a month so I might buy them at the thrift store and there's nothing wrong with that because there are a lot of nice looking things these days in thrift stores I guess that's all and it was a lot and I don't know if a lot of it made sense I don't know if I finished certain thoughts I don't know if I sounded pretentious I hope I didn't I'm not perfect myself I own fast fashion clothing too but I have changed a lot and I don't buy into micro trends anymore. I don't go on TikTok anymore because I know I'm an impulse buyer. I just don't go into certain stores anymore if, they, if I know that they trigger me. And I've just been 
saying out loud to myself like you don't need that you already have that or you're not gonna use that and i don't know i hope that maybe some people are starting to think like that too yeah oh and by the way i fully acknowledge that drops air might not be the most sustainable option out there but it's knitwear and I'm gonna use it a lot. And I'm not gonna get started on the fiber debate of people saying you can't use acrylic yarn or whatnot. We're not getting into that. I think if you're a knitter, you already know all that. <laughs> so basically, I don't know. I just wanted to say like, you know, take good care of what you have and don't throw it out because there is a more shiny and sustainable option out there because what you were using is the most sustainable thing you can do. Um, we did about three rows of knitting because I was talking so much and I decreased at a completely wrong moment, but that's fine. You will see this sweater in other videos too that are coming up. I just really wanted to talk about this and let me know if you want more of these random knit and chats. Like I could do this about anything. I could do a knit and chat about my favorite recipes. I could do a knit and chat about myself. I could do a knit and chat about books I'm reading currently. Currently I'm reading Orlando by Virginia Woolf because I have to for school. I could do that. Oh, maybe I could do a knit and chat about books that I'm reading or movies that I'm watching. If you want to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel. You can buy my patterns on Ravelry via the link in my bio. My Instagram is also linked in there. I don't have TikTok anymore. It still exists if you want to check it out, but I don't post on there anymore. I just wasn't, my screen time was crying for help. So I deleted the app. I'm most active on Instagram and on YouTube. So please check it out. A pattern will come for this sweater, but it might take a while. And I'm currently working on this pattern as well. So please check that out. I don't want to look at the timer on how long I've been talking. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.